Hello guys and welcome to a new Star Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. In this video I have for you game 2 of a best of 3 between Herr Robert and Under the Sea in the quarterfinals of season 7 of the Steel Division 2 league. Today they are playing on Kostritza and on our left in the red team playing on the allied side we have Herr Robert using the 8th Indian infantry and the balanced deployment type and on the right hand side we have Under the Sea using the 28th Jaeger on the Axis side with the Maverick deployment type. So Herr Robert putting faith in the 8th Indian Infantry once again. Didn't work out from in the first game. It is of course 1-0 to Under the Sea at the moment. But Herr Robert going to be wanting to potentially make a comeback here in this best of three series. Under the Sea going to want to seal the deal and move on to the semi-final as quickly as possible. I mentioned before he is a finalist from both season five and season six so yeah going to be wanting to move on as soon as possible and get back towards that final let's have a look at what under the sea is bringing down here so at the start he's got three jaeger flammenwerfer he's got a 45 mil at gun two jaeger pioneers the jaeger two Sturmjäger, three Sturmjäger, make that four Sturmjäger, and the Jäger Pioneer Führer. Further down we see three Jäger with a 45mm and there's also a 50mm there and there's going to be an MG42 and what looks like an artillery piece, the 75mm Geb on the bottom side and then at the very bottom we see a pack 38 45mm two Jaegers and a Jaeger Fusilier. These 45 mils are captured Russian guns, if you guys are wondering. On the side of Herr Robert, we've got Indian Rifles, Gurkha's Rifles, Indian Rifle Leader, another Gurkha's Rifle, and then three Indian Field Engineers. Uh, further down, we're going to be seeing three more Gurkha's Rifles, Indian Rifles, Indian Scouts, and the Indian Vickers HMG with the Indian Rifle Leader. Going to be the Field Engineers, Scouts, Vickers, and then a Humber Mark IV, the Autocar M3, two Field Engineers, Vickers, Scouts, and a 17-pounder there. And then on this bottom side, going to be two Indian Field Engineers and the Gurkhas. The reason I can read these so well is because when I select them and hover over them at the bottom here, I can read them nice and easy. So the 28th Jaeger is a really good division. It has superb infantry, like the Jaegers are... The baseline infantry that cost 20 points, they have submachine guns, a lot of submachine guns, and then a decent MG for engaging at range. They have these Sturmjägers, which are uh, MP44 equipped infantry, and in this case he's bringing them at two-star vet. So with uh, just the leader, he's going to be able to push them to three vet, and they're going to do a lot of damage at the mid-range. The Jaeger Flammenwerfers, I believe, have a dual flamethrower squads. So they don't even have a submachine gun. They've just got two flamethrower boys. It's pretty awesome, yeah. The close-range engagement capability of the 28th Jaeger is really nice. And I'm a bit worried that things might turn out similar to the first game where Herr Robert struggles with the close-range engagements versus Under the Sea with the uh, 8th Indian. But... One thing we do need to point out is this time around here, Robert is not using Maverick deployment type. He's using balanced deployment type. So I think what Herr Robert is expecting here is the game to go on to the late game as it did in the first game and then be able to take advantage of that with the balanced deployment type having that extra income in phase C that he'll be then able to use to dominate his opponent. But under the sea will know that this is the case and will therefore likely push very hard with his maverick division in phase b in order to secure a win so Herr Robert really needs to be on the lookout for that indian scouts are going to be engaging the mg42 here nice thing about these indian scouts is they are four man squads uh, so they are quite resilient but that's going to be a free squad taken out there by the auto car early on and jaeger fusilier jaeger unloading down here not too much happening on the bottom side. Focke-Wolf 190 coming in for the run onto the Hurricane. But this Focke-Wolf 190 is absolutely abysmal at shooting down enemy aircraft. Particularly Hurricanes because they are much more resilient in general. If it was up against another fighter then it probably would have been fine. But against the Hurricane, no way. Um, this thing just has no damage 
And even the Hurricane might go for the kill there onto the Fog Wolf if Under the Sea is not careful. But the Fog Wolf is very fast, so the Hurricane is going to struggle to keep up for sure. Those bombing, that bombing strike was a little bit of a waste. It did look like the uh, pack was already dealt with before the bombs landed. So that's unfortunate for Herr Robert, but a good advantage on this bottom side early on. Uh, we did only see like the MG42 and the Geb here for this section of the map. So Herr Robert has completely exploited that and managed to get the field engineers quite far up early on. Looks like in the mid and on the top side no engagements have occurred just yet but this is a large force of infantry that under the sea is going to be pushing through towards Herr Robert. But currently at range the double Bren is probably going to win out against the MG42 especially since the Gurkhas are in heavy cover and the Sturmjäger are not they're in light cover. That Fokkerwolf getting a nice easy kill there and it looks like the infantry engagements are going to start to happen on this mid top side. Sturmjäger, they're going to need to remain in their cover here if they're going to want to get some decent effectiveness out of them. They also need to be within the 300 meter range and currently this is but has been pinned down. Look how quickly these Gurkhas go down. When these Sturmjäger are like not pinned at all and have the extra veterancy, they can do a lot of damage very quickly. Gurkhas on the top side are eventually going to get pinned down by the machine guns and forced back. Here comes another Fokkerwolf. These Fokkerwolves with the 8 50 kilogram bombs are actually pretty nice. They can pin down infantry very quickly and they can do a serious amount of damage as well. So the Vic is actually going down completely and the Gurkhas rifles down to five men after that bombing strike it allows the Sturmjäger to remain in position for the time being these Indian field engineers really can't do much about these Sturmjäger they can try and approach them but they'd need smoke for cover because otherwise what's going to happen is a Sturmjäger will just delete them in the open if a MP44 infantry squad is firing from heavy cover to no cover it will destroy a squad very very quickly indeed So both these field engineers kept on return fire, and correctly so. He doesn't want to reveal those at range and have them taken on by the Jaegers MG42. Humber's actually going to be zooming up here. Is he going to look for potentially surrender? Although he can't really with a recon vehicle because it doesn't push the front line. Uh, Hurricane Mark 4 getting a nice easy kill there on the bottom side with its bombing strike and the Pack 45 is going to clean up the Humber. The Humber, it can surrender things I think as long as the unit is you know within the front line but you'd need to have something else push the front line over. Indian Field Engineer getting a really nice engagement there actually onto the Jaeger Fizzler in the open. Does enough damage to just one-shot it with the HE. That was really nice. Panzerjäger though, going to deal with the Humber up here. And it looks like things are back to 12 to 12. As Under the Sea's infantry has started to pay off on this top side. On the bottom, things pretty quiet for the time being. Although Under the Sea is starting to bring up some more reinforcements there. Hurricane Mark IV on the top side does get the free bombing strike onto the Panzerjäger. Neither players... I was going to say bringing up AA yet, but Herr Robert does have these double bofers back here now. Already had enough of the Fokker Wolves. Got to be careful not to overinvest in AA though, because that could lead to him being at a larger points disparity in the early to mid game, which would give Under the Sea the chance to push aggressively with his Maverick division. Jaeger, lucky not to get transport sniped by the 17-pounder there. Moving into position on that bottom side. Jaeger Pioneers. With the MG42s. Starting to do decent damage. Jaeger Flammenwerfer is going to use their smoke to try and cross across the open here. And as you can see, they do have the double flamethrower. Just means that they get extra suppression generally onto anything that they are fighting which is quite nice indeed 45 able to get HE shots into the Vickers here and with the MG42 also helping out that Vickers is likely to go down 
Under the Sea is using this 75mm Geb as direct fire more than anything. That's really interesting. I don't think they're that expensive, so that might be the reasoning why. Uh, but it's so nice that all of the infantry of the Jaegers get MG42s. Oh, look at that push on the bottom side of the go, because rifles get deleted in the open really, really early on. Jaeger Pioneer is also going to be able to get HE onto the Indian rifles there as well. Sturm Jaegers are going to be able to move up, pin them down, surrender them most likely. Really nice infantry micro here from under the sea is giving him ground. And if he can get rid of the rest of the Indian field engineers here, he'll be putting himself at a lead. On the bottom side, Jaegers getting very close to discovering the field engineers. Those field engineers could easily open up now and kill that Jaeger. Yeah, these Gebs, they're only 45 points, so relatively good as infantry support guns and can indirect fire, so he could use them maybe to pin down any infantry that he thinks he can see in these buildings, but yeah, Herr Robert really needs to make sure that he lets those fire sooner than later. In this case, it did work out, but that could have very easily ended up in a situation where the Jaeger jumped in the building with the field engineers, and then the field engineers wouldn't have been able to use their satchel, and then the Jaegers would have got a free kill. In that case, the attack move from the Jaegers actually saved his bacon a little bit there. Oh, that gib though. <laughs> the other Jaeger did go down, but the field engineers pay the price in that case. These field engineers, not long for this world, I don't think, as the Sturm Jaegers move in. And they're going to discover them. We'll be able to dodge the HE if it's thrown, but it's not. And now Under the Sea has a really strong position. Even the Sturm Jaeger able to get the AT onto the Sherman 5. Big mistake from Herr Robert there, allowing the Sherman 5 to go down to one of those infantry squads. And the bomber's going to miss the mark as well. Things are not looking good here for Herr Robert. His Hurricane taking quite a lot of damage. That's going to be out of order for a little while. And now we're seeing a 14 to 10 in favor of Under the Sea. And with the balanced income, if it gets to the 20, 25 minute mark, I would say the 25 minute mark's more fair, then Herr Robert's going to be able to have a much better time in this game. But that's if he can last that long. And at the moment, it's not looking good. Hurricane really in a bit of a predicament under that fire, getting crit by the 37. Bokka Wolf, can it finish it off? It can, just before it got pinned down by the Bofors as well. That will be very frustrating for Herr Robert. And a lovely kill there onto the 17-pounder from the Geb as well. These two Gebs being used as direct fire is really, really nice. And that's going to give the flag over to Under the Sea, pushing the double tick now in favour of him. Yeah, you get being pushed back by the auto cart. The auto cart is pretty nice for attacking infantry because it does have the 1.52 damage and the 50 cal if it's close enough. With the rate of fire as well, 12 round per minute rate of fire. Can chip these infantry squads at a distance very quickly. This salient is not good for Herr Robert though. And I'm starting to think that he's really, really struggling, struggling for infantry engagement or infantry availability, sorry, here uh, against Under the Sea in the early game. He's just moved into Phase B, so he will now have more infantry available, but I think what ended up happening in the early game, in the first, you know, 10 minutes in Phase A, is Under the Sea's deck was definitely more front-loaded due to being Maverick in the infantry department. Interesting to see this time around that uh, Herr Robert does have the Assault Pioneers in his division. These Assault Pioneers aren't very strong though. They're only four-man squads. And so they do get deleted by standard infantry pretty quickly. And I mean, even Jaegers are going to 
be able to defeat Indian Assault Pioneers at close range because they're so cheap and they have the 7 MP40s there which gives them some decent DPS like the 2.8 damage there at close range is really really nice. The Geb coming under fire from the Sherman. Sherman should make short work of the 75 mil. Tanks do get a bonus versus artillery in terms of suppression so make short work of that. I think maybe damage as well I'm not entirely sure though. The Indian Assault Pioneers moving in there. Jaeger Pioneer not going to be able to trade the Assault Pioneers. And the Jaeger Flammenwerfer moving back and what Under the Sea is trying to do here is he's trying to consolidate his infantry all together so that he can engage these all at the same time. But really important right now for these Assault Pioneers to gain back control of that forest on the top side. The bottom side he can deal with due to these like Shermans. If he gets another Sherman in here he should be okay. And he's also got the Indian Scouts that can like pick off any other units that he wants to. If he actually engages the MG42 right now with the Indian Scouts, he can probably take out everything else no problem without really losing them. So that might be a good idea for him if he sees that opportunity. But both players now bringing in off map. You're going to see the 210 mil off map for under the sea. And Herr Robert's got his, like, I think it's 140 mil off map uh, that he's going to be putting on under the sea there. The Assault Pioneers going up against the Jaeger Flammenwerfer. The Jaeger Flammenwerfer is so good. Probably going to be able to, like, beat any four man squad 1v1 like that because of the they have the two flamers. Almost did. But the other Assault Pioneers came to save the day. Boston does come in with a bombing strike to take out one of the pack 38s. Jaeger's just going to bypass the Indian scouts for the time being. Having the Indian scouts here alive is nice. They're going to be able to keep the eyes on all of this unit, give him the recon for his airstrikes, but I can't help but feel that there was a good opportunity there for the Indian scouts to engage the MG42 and take it out very quickly and then deal with the rest of the support weapons. Now we're going to be seeing a Stug 3 coming through on the bottom side. The Stug 3 is actually going to be able to defeat a Sherman 5 at range. So Herr Robert's going to probably now need a 17-pounder uh, if he wants to control the open range engagement. Oh, lovely off map there. Does kill one of the Bofors. Also takes out the leader, which is really big. Will it kill off the other Bofors? I'm not sure that Bofors is going to be in range of the off map now. Oh, bit of a mistake there, actually, from under the sea. Its own off map kills both of his Sturmjäger. And then the Jäger there get taken out as well. I'm not sure it's going to matter too much as we are into phase B. 15 minutes into the game the maverick deployment type income is certainly having a huge impact right now as we see 17 to 7 in the flags bombing strike coming in getting a easy jaeger kill with a double 37 can it finish off the hurricane maybe the focke wolf can finish off the hurricane doesn't look like it will. The Bofors going to be able to make it fall back. It does fall back actually over the Bofors, so this could be a good opportunity for the Bofors to shoot that down. If it had fallen back to the right, where that Bofors were falling back instead, it might have been okay, but I think this is going to go down. Yeah, the Fokker will have taken out there. The Sherman might have been credited the kill with the 50 cal. My bombing strike coming in. These bombing strikes have really got to hit the mark so that Herr Robert can get really good value out of his infantry. And in this case, hits the Sturmjäger and Jäger here. I actually thought it was going for this blob, which would have made more sense because he would have been able to pin them down and then go for a surrender of some sort. Up here, Gurkha's rifles and the assault pioneers going to be trying to engage three units of Jaeger. The Jaegers are pretty low on health and they have just been slightly pinned by his own off map again. 
under the sea being uh, <laughs> very careless, I guess, with his infantry. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they're going to be falling back. Yeah, Robert is going to be disinclined to push him forward, push forwards though, because he, his units have also been slightly pinned. But if he can notice that these Jaegers have been pinned, he might be able to get a triple surrender there, which would be quite nice. So on the bottom side, 17 pounder is coming up. He's going to probably try and slide that into position in the tree line here to pop the Stug 3 nice and quickly. Hurricane Mark 4 does get a nice bombing strike in and the surrender does come through on those Jaegers. So a little bit of respite now for Herr Robert, but a little bit of work still to do. Needs to capture back this flag, needs to capture back this flag and just stop this what is now a triple tick, I believe onto himself. That is 18 to 6. And there's still more infantry coming in. So maybe no respite for Herr Robert, unfortunately. The infantry difference here is so big. It's probably just as well that Focke Wolf got forced to fall back by the Bofors because it looked like it was about to pin down the Pioneer. Pioneer Gets a little bit of damage onto the Assault Pioneer, but now the Sturm Jäger, Jäger Pioneer moving in. Under the Sea just needs to keep up the aggression. The Assault Pioneers have been able to sweep through on this top side though and capture back one flag there. So that's really good. And the Boston coming in for the Bombing Strike. Looks like it's going to get some free damage in. Yeah, those uh, Jäger went down to two men. Ooh, Stug 3. Getting a cheeky shot down the road there onto the Bedford. They're going to take out two. It took out two. Ooh. Bad mistake from here, Robert. But the Indian Rifles do secure back the flag down here. 17 pounder has got now line of sight onto the Stug 3. If he can take out the Stug 3 on the bottom side, the Sherman will have precedent here again. Uh, which will be useful if these Indian Rifles want to continue pushing across the open. But this engagement is so important right now. Boston coming in again for a bombing strike. There is quite a lot of AA now. The 37 plus the 220 mils might actually end up shooting down that Boston. Now Boston did do a good job against the infantry, pinning them. It's going to survive. Boston's are so resilient. Oh, another off map on the way. Look at that. Oh, it's going to be a hard time for Herr Robert. When you get stuck in this situation, like he is kind of close to getting into phase B and being able to turn this, or phase C and turn this around. But the issue that he's going to have right now is there's no way for him to really get through this off map effectively, right? And the, all of the time while this off map's coming down, that's going to be time that Under the Sea is holding the flags. And the longer he holds the flags, the you know the less time Herr Robert's going to have to bring, like, to take them back. So here we go, off map coming down. Big caliber off map as well. So it will pin anything that it lands nearby. And it will potentially allow even these low health infantry squads to get good value here. Unless the Gurkha's rifles can kill both of those. No, the off map saves the day with a direct hit. That Gurkhas definitely had the potential to take out both of those Jaegers. Oh, now the Geb also firing at the Indian Rifles and taking them out. Sturm Jaeger coming in, looking for the surrenders after that off map has fallen. Don't spot the Gurkhas. The Gurkhas do have the Raider traits, so they have very good stealth. Neither of the Sturm Jaeger actually spot them on the way past. And no surrenders for Under the Sea. Bombing strikes do a decent chunk of damage again onto Under the Sea's infantry. And Herr Robert really just needs to continue to try and whittle down Under the Sea's forces, but he has such good value in all of these Jaegers. Look how many he's brought in there. That's like nine squads. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight squads, sorry, of Jaegers. He's just going to be pushing deep onto the objectives. And make it really, really hard for Herr Robert to push back. 
Under the Seas sees victory in his sights. Fockwolf was forced off a bombing strike onto the Indian Rifles here, but the Jaeger Pioneer going to easily be able to win against both of those Indian Rifles. Infantry disparity has really been the name of the game in this series between these two players. It's unfortunate because I feel like, you know, Herr Robert, he had a good chance to win the first game. I think his game plan this time around was to have a game similar to the first, but then have the extra availability later on. But on a map like Kostrica, having good close range infantry is super important, and the assault pioneers just don't cut it with these flamethrowers. And also the the other assault pioneers or engineers, assault engineers, whatever they're called, with the HE, having them early on doesn't really give you enough of them so the Indian rifles just get stuck in this engagement that they can never win and particularly against units like Jaegers at close range Indian rifles lose to Jaegers at long range Indian rifles lose to Jaegers because they have an MG42 <laughs> I say that and down here I think the Indian rifles are going to win because the Jaegers came into the cover already slightly pinned down so <laughs> Indian Rifles getting the better of them there. Also, the Indian Rifles do have that base one vet, which is actually helping out quite a lot there. Indian Assault Pioneers looking to finish off those two Jaeger Pioneer on the top side at least. Uh, currently 16 to 8 though. This flag now back in the hands of Under the Sea. These two flags start on the side of Herr Robert. And so, yeah, this is where the 50 50 is at the start. You can see that all of this ground to the left of that is what Under the Sea has taken and it's costing Herr Robert quite a bit. Only one minute left on the clock. Under the Sea trying to keep up the pressure as much as he can. We have now moved into that phase C with the 80 points per minute. Under the Sea has been working with that for a little while. But it's really up to Herr Robert just to continue to get good trades he doesn't even need good trades really with the balanced deployment type um, he just needs to trade even evenly and he will eventually win the game but I don't think under the seas left him enough time and the Jaeger Fusilier pushing up really far here they do have the close range AT the Sherman's been forced to back off the Stug 3 gets a free hit and whilst that Sherman is usually really good fire support for this infantry, it's... Ooh, oh, I was going to say going to go down, but the Stug 3 actually missed that shot uncharacteristically. Jaeger Pioneer going to be taken out. It's going to be a flag back in favour of Herr Robert. Nice kill from the 17-pounder onto the infantry in the open. And you can see that under the sea, you know, he is starting to be broken down. But it's too late. He's won. Under the sea. Nicely done. Does it perfectly with the Maverick. And you can tell when it's when it's done well. Because the Maverick will win around the 25 minute mark against the balance deployment type if they've played it properly. And from pretty much every Maverick versus balance game we've seen so far, that has been the case. So here's just another one. Under the sea. Getting the job done. Um, actually, negative KD for both players due to probably some friendly fire. Um, 2,160 kills, the 2,190 losses. So yeah, at the end, things were starting to tip back in favour of Herr Robert. And if that engagement had continued for another five minutes, Herr Robert takes the game, but... Uh, under the sea did everything he had to kept up the pressure massively in phase b it's just all that infantry piling in um to make sure that he kept the ground but yeah i think it generally comes down to the early game infantry engagements uh, being very one-sided towards the 28th jaeger in this case because the 8th indian doesn't really do too well it just doesn't have the tools um, that it needs to engage the Jaegers. It doesn't have like any Stemoviki, for example, or like Tanko Desaniki, like the, the Soviet divisions get. Like 
any like Yakari that you, maybe even like the Finnish get, for example. Like the Commonwealth divisions just don't have very good close range infantry, full stop. Um, and when you're relying on flamer squads that only have four men and their submachine guns suck and they don't have much federancy, it's kind of like, you know, yeah, you're going to have a lot of them and you can try and overwhelm your opponent, which he did do. But what does it cost, right? It's like, it's really difficult for Herr Robert to get value in the early game out of that, uh, particularly with like the Indian field engineers. You know, they're training one for one against Jaegers, which is abysmal really for like a close range infantry squad. And the Indian field engineers, you know, I think they're only 15 points. So technically they are trading up by killing a Jaeger squad that's 20 points. But Generally, you're going to want an infantry squad at close range, like the Pioneers, on the side of the Germans that can trade two for one rather than just one for one. That's the ideal uh, for those close range engagements. Uh, I really like the use of Under the Seas uh, Gebs. That was really nice. Uh, one of them did go down there to the Sherman. Uh, but again, nice use from the planes for Herr Robert but I think Under the Sea was much more prepared for that this time around so it was less effective overall because Under the Sea got the AA up earlier on and also had a Fokker Wolf out earlier on as well so managed to shoot down those planes in terms of losses uh, well this is Under the Sea's kills you see the Sturmjäger there deleting field engineers um, the Jäger Pioneer trading three for one you know, these these are the sorts of engagements that you want to see out of your close range infantry. And Herr Robert just doesn't have anything that's on the same class as a Jaeger Pioneer. You just it, that's just the eighth infantry in a nutshell. Sturm Jaeger again going three for one, two for one against like Gurkha's rifles, even. It's just really, really nice. Like getting really good value out of his infantry. And that's what won under the sea this game. And there you have it. So with that going in favor of under the sea, that is two nil. And Herr Robert will be knocked out of the playoffs. Commiserations to him. Uh, but it's good to see him reaching the finals here in uh, Division 1. So, uh, yeah, I think it's a good accomplishment for him. Now, Under the Sea is going to be moving on to play against Onord in the semi-finals. Onord was uh, seeded first in the group. So, like in the group stages. So, yeah. That's who he's going to be playing against next, and I'm looking forward to it. But, we're, but first of all, we'll be uh, taking a look at uh, Gonzo versus Fanti. Um, Fanti going 2-1 against Skoda. That was a great series. If you missed it, definitely go check it out. That's it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Yeah,